all the person's bad qualities are eliminated and they have only good qualities, which means that all of their time, energy, intention, work, all their qualities become spiritual. Spiritual means in relation with Krishna. So, uh, anartanivritti is a very important stage in the development of devotional service. Yeah, turn down the room ambient uh, sound. It's raining really hard. It means that all of a person's bad qualities go away. Anartanivritti. And this is where we see that most devotees get stuck. We know devotees who've been chanting the holy name for 20, 30 years or more, and they are still not at this stage of anartanivritti. Yeah, they've taken initiation from a bona fide spiritual master. Yeah, they've been chanting the holy name for so long. And even so, they're not getting past anartanivritti to the stage of steadiness. That's the next thing. After all these bad qualities go away, then the next stage is? Huh? Nishta. Nishta means steadiness. Steadiness. If someone is steady in devotional service, it means they don't fall down. They don't become involved in material activities again. They don't uh, desire material enjoyment anymore because they have a source of spiritual enjoyment that is far superior. Huh? So they don't need these material things. So why is it then that the devotees are not attaining anartanivritti? Why is it that our God brothers, for example, they keep falling down, they keep having spiritual problems? Huh? Why is that? Well, it could be that for one thing they don't know enough about anartanivritti. You'll find that this nectar of devotion that we've been studying is not very well known in the temples. You go around to the different temples, you'll find that the people aren't studying it, they're not lecturing from it, they're not reading it, they're not knowledgeable in these things. So how are you going to attain anartanivritti if you don't know what the anarthas are? Huh? If you don't know that something is undesirable, if you don't know that it's going to lead you into a condition of poverty where you lose all your spiritual credits, then you won't know that, oh, this is something I ought to give up. You might even think that it's a good quality. Huh? But actually, it's, a, it's an albatross around your neck. It's a, it's a bag of rocks. Huh? And until you put your bag of rocks down, you can't receive the diamonds of higher stages of devotional service, like attachment for Krishna, ecstatic emotions, and pure love of Godhead. Huh? These are the higher stages on the path of devotional service. Until you get past this stage of anartanivritti, you won't be steady. How can you be a higher devotee if you're not steady, if you keep falling down all the time? Uh, if, uh, if you're running a race and you keep falling down, well, <laughs> you know, you're not going to come in first, that's for sure. So this devotional service is like a race, it's like a marathon means that you have to pace yourself. You have to find a pace that you can maintain and be steady at for a long period of time, years. And that is how you actually make it to the finish line. Uh, you, become, you become steady, you pace yourself, but the qualification required is this anartanivritti, to attain that steadiness. You can't be falling down all the time. You can't be tripping down, falling over material desires and material activities. So, what we're going to study today is the different types of anarthas and say a little bit about each one. Does everyone have the link to the, uh, yeah, give them the link that I uh, posted a PDF file, which we're all looking at here. We have it printed out. You should also be looking at it. So basically, anarthas, these unwanted things, are of four kinds. Uh, 
Svarupa Brahma means illusion about your spiritual identity. We're all spiritual beings. We are eternally spiritual beings. Huh? It's not like we have to become a spiritual being. We already are a spiritual being. And the proof of that is that we are conscious. Consciousness is not like anything else. Consciousness is so unique because without consciousness, nothing else is important. Think about it. Huh? If somebody knocks you on the head and you're unconscious, you can't think about anything, you can't do anything, you can't feel anything, you can't know anything, you can't have an opinion about anything, you can't say anything, you can't have an emotion, you can't even perceive anything. You're unconscious. If you're unconscious, you have no consciousness, nothing else is important, nothing else matters, and you can't do anything. See? Consciousness is so important because consciousness is the thing that gives importance or value to everything else. Isn't it? What is a desire? If you look at a desire, a desire means you want to be conscious of some particular thing. I mean, at the root of it. You say, you know, I want a new car. Well, what does that mean? It means you want to enjoy the consciousness of yourself riding in your new car. Isn't it? What, what if we give you a new car and then uh, we give you some, some uh, uh, anesthetic and knock you out, huh? and then we put you in your new car? Are you going to enjoy your new car? No, because you're unconscious. How can you enjoy your new car unless you're conscious? So if you have a desire for a new car, that means you want to be conscious of you having a new car. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Isn't it so? So, the very first thing, the very most important thing about being alive is that we are conscious. And consciousness is a very, very special thing. Huh? Because, for example, I can't see my own eyeball unless I'm in front of a mirror or something like that. But in an ordinary situation, I can't see my own eyes, isn't it? But I can see my own consciousness. If, you, if I ask you, are you conscious? What are you going to say? Yes, right? So you are conscious of the fact that you are conscious. That means that consciousness is not an ordinary thing. Consciousness is not a material thing. It means that consciousness is transcendental. Transcendental means it's not of this material world. Uh, some people try to say that consciousness is some uh, byproduct of the function of the brain or something like that. Well, if that's so, then how can we be conscious of consciousness? See? If consciousness was simply a function of the brain, it would be like the eye. The eye cannot see itself. But consciousness can see itself. Therefore, consciousness is not material. Consciousness is spiritual, and because that, of that, consciousness is eternal. You can never remember a time when you are unconscious, can you? So our very existence has to be not on this material platform, but on the spiritual platform, on the eternal platform, without beginning or end. Because if our consciousness did end at any time, actually end, actually finish, Huh? then we wouldn't be a spiritual being at all. And then all of this, none of this would matter. Nothing would matter. Life would become meaningless. Huh? Because if consciousness ends, that means consciousness is simply material, it's simply a function of the brain. 
And what's the difference if one brain or, or one brain more or less, you know, there's no difference. There's no meaning to it, no value. When we say something has meaning, that means it has value. So the most valuable thing in the world is consciousness because the value of every other thing in the world is dependent on consciousness. And without consciousness, nothing has any value. Or if consciousness is material, we reach the same conclusion that nothing has any value. Might as well just go all go off and kill ourselves. Huh? So consciousness, therefore, is the meaning and the value of life. And everything that's meaningful, everything that's valuable is derived from consciousness. Therefore, the knowledge about consciousness and the development of consciousness is the most valuable thing that we can do in life. So why is everybody spending so much time on material stuff? Huh? 